aeration. You really want to be at 12 to 15 parts per million. Yeast really like to be 12 to 15 parts per million of pure oxygen inside there. Uh, the stuff we breathe is eight parts per million. Um, so it's going to take 45 seconds of vigorous shaking on your carboy um, to, to reach eight parts per million. A minute and a half of vigorous shaking is going to give you eight parts per million. 15 minutes of vigorous shaking is going to give you a workout at eight parts per million. Um, using pure oxygen, 80 seconds into five gallons, about 90 seconds into six gallons for wine. It's going to bring you up to that 12 to 15 parts per million. That's just with a centered stone in there. If you don't want to get your stone dirty, you can just fill the headspace with oxygen. So drop the stone in the headspace, fill it up until oxygen is coming out, and then shake that and put the oxygen that's in the headspace into uh, into the beer or the wine. Is it a, is it a good sign if, say, you're doing this in a carboy and it's all frothed up in there? Is yeah, you can kind of see the bubbles start to go uh, in into the solution in 45 seconds of shaking. I I set the timer on my microwave and just shake because that's it's actually a pretty long time shaking like 40 gallons of must um, in a beer. And on a couple of my carboys, I have the screw caps, and so I just put the screw cap on and roll it around. The there's in other words, there's plenty of air trapped in there to shake in. Yeah, you know, you're going to feel the pressure build up on your hand, and so you can release pressure a couple times to get more air in and shake it. Or you can release pressure with the cat and shake it. Um, Do you recommend one of them things that they, like a drill thing that you go in there and spin it? Uh, for degassing, yes, in wine. For that, okay. um, uh, I just bought one because the last time I just took <laughs> took a spoon and it was like 15 minutes of, <laughs> 15 minutes of mixing and uh, that I get the stainless steel. I'm a big fan of stainless steel rather than you know, plastic. As soon as the plastic gets a scratch, that can harbor bacteria. So they have really nice stainless steel ones down there, and you just put it on the drill and put that in there for five minutes, and that's going to help the wine clarify at the end. So uh, on the wine side, uh, but that not on beer. Oh uh, well, that's a, you're you're stirring it to degas it at uh, the back end of fermentation. At the beginning, you're shaking it to build. Uh, of oxygen inside there so the yeast can take that oxygen and beef up their cell walls because they're going to divide a lot. It might depend what speed you're going at. You don't want to degas wine at 2400 RPMs. You don't want to get the, the whirlpool very well good oxygen. Okay. So go a little slower. you got to pull back halfway on the trigger about 1200 RPMs. Okay. Pulse it. Don't, don't even get the whirlpool. Um, I would have done that. <laughs> <your wine>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not a big fan of an aquarium pump uh, to put your oxygen in. Uh, it's probably not sterile, even like the homemade filters are pretty hard to keep sterile. Then you're pumping five minutes of oxygen in from outside into your beer. Um, to get that eight ppm, I just shake, shake the carboy. The um, best thing to do is your oxygen. You really need it. Um, and that's like a 30 second course? Uh, no, just leave it on for 80 seconds. 80 seconds drop in is going to do it, or you know, just fill the headspace and shake it for 45. Force ferment test. Uh, this is more applicable to beer than it is to wine. Uh, wine is going to probably go all the way out. You're not boiling your wine, so you're not creating longer chain sugars. Grape sugars are pretty easy for yeast to eat. Uh, they're short chain. They don't have multi-trios and stuff like that on there.